And now, your prayer intentions with author Peter and Jimmy. Hello and welcome to another edition of Your Prayer Intentions. As we spend the next 25 minutes in prayer, in description, and in scripture. As we pray for your prayer intentions. Now, it's an interesting week for me because this has been... It's been a tough week for me spiritually, and there's I know I've, that's happened more than once to me when we've had the show, and it happens to everybody. And one of the things you want to look at when that stuff happens is remember that everyone's going to have tough weeks. The trick is to not let it stop you from doing what needs to be done. from getting to confession, from getting that clean slate that you need. That's the trick of the enemy. That will always be the trick of the enemy. So keep that in mind when you're having a tough spiritual week. Now I'm going to go over the scripture readings for this week that we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to read you all three of the Sunday readings for this week. But we're going to specify, we're going to go heavily on the final reading, one of the the big Catholic readings there are in Scripture. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 22, verses 19 to 23. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Heliakim, I will clothe him in your robe and gird him in your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the house of Judea. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one will open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. That's the first reading. The second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How inscrutable are his judgments, how unsearchable his ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord, who has been his counselor, or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. And now the Gospel reading. And this, if you're a Catholic... And if you're listening to your prayer intentions on WQPH and EWTN station, you most assuredly are. This has to be one of the most familiar readings for a Catholic. This is from Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, Who do the people say the Son of Man is? And they replied, Some say John the Baptist... Others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I shall build my church. The gates of the nether world shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. Now, of course, that is the establishment of the papacy. That is the establishment of the primacy of Peter. And that is the establishment of all that has come from it. The keys to the kingdom, of course, the symbol of the Vatican, they're on the Vatican flag. And it gives the power to bind and to loose. And this is something we're all familiar with. This is something that a lot of our Protestant brothers like to duck. 
or like to try and explain away. And that's because when you decide you want to justify oneself, it's very hard if you want if you want to do something else. It can be very hard when someone says no. Ask Henry VIII, which is why we have an Anglican church. Couldn't get the divorce, so we're going to form our own church. But what's interesting about this is not only the primacy and the establishment of Peter, but it's what he says after this. Then he strictly instructed his disciples to tell no one that he was the Messiah. Now this might seem odd to some degree. Obviously Jesus is preaching, trying to introduce the people to the kingdom of heaven. Yet he tells his disciples, don't tell anyone I'm the Messiah. Why would that be? Well, one thought instantly comes to mind. And that's the fact that most of the Jews of the time had a specific idea of what the Messiah would be. They were, of course, under the Roman Empire at the time. Before that, they had had to uh, get out from under the Greeks who would repress their uh, worship. And, you know, historically they had been conquered several times. And many of them saw, especially the Zealots, for example, saw the Messiah as a military leader who would get rid of foreign occupation and bring forward, you know, the kingdom of the Jews. Many people had very different ideas of what the Messiah is and should be versus what the message of Christ actually was and the purpose of Christ actually was. And it occurs to me that by not leading with, I am the Messiah, all of those expectations, when you encountered to Jesus, you encountered Jesus where he was, rather than where you expected him to be. Once you said the word Messiah, this is what it, well, this is what it has to be. It has to be this. So instead of allowing people to make God in their image, that make the Messiah into how they expected it to be. He gave them the message and let them figure it out. And how often do we do that in life? How often do we make God in our image instead of seeing ourselves in the image of God? How often do we say, oh, this person cannot be redeemed. This person is beyond the pale. So God must hate this person. How often do we do that and take our expectations, our evaluations, our thoughts of how it should be done, say, this is the way God really wants it. This is how, God sh this is how it should be. And God's with me on this. When we make God and remake God in our own image, in our own prejudices, that is how we violate the first commandment. You shall have no other gods but me. You shall not set up in a, an idol and so forth. That is, setting, that is how we as individuals set up idols. And it touches on a point I've made several times here over the years is that God's mercy comes to people when it does. When God is ready to move, the opportunities come. And the opportunities will be in his time, not ours. 
which is one of the reasons why you want to, want to love those not only who love you, but who don't love you. Because you don't know when God will hold out that hand. You don't know. It may be in your time, and maybe even by the act of loving your enemies, that is part of God holding out that hand. But when you remake God in your image, when you decide this is how God wants to be, and the church, and remember, this is the job of the church, to say what is sinful and what is not, what is doctrine and what is not. But even with those truths, God makes the decisions. God makes the decision on mercy. God makes the decision on forgiveness. The priest acts in personas Christi, in the person of Christ. So he is becoming Christ when he breaks the bed, right? When he does the sacrifice at the altar. When he forgives. And that is so important to remember. That is so vital to remember. So we have to look at these things. And we have to remember that God is acting in his time. And that God does not push himself on some does not reveal all to everyone at the same time, because everyone has, as we've mentioned before here, everyone has different sins. Everyone has different proclivities. Everyone has different problems. And thus God approaches people in different ways, just as the saints are very different. The saints all point to Christ, but many of them do them and do it in different ways. Not because the other ways are wrong, not because the other ways are bad, but because this is the way that was most efficacious. And when God gives a revelation such as the ones to St. Faustina, it's to aid people in finding him. And sometimes the methods used are timely for a particular time, sometimes they're timeless. But always they lead to God. Always they lead to Christ. When Peter binds on earth and looses on earth and binds in heaven and loosens in heaven, it's all about getting to God, getting to Christ, getting to Christ's mercy. That's what it's all about. and always will be. But if we start, as Jesus warned his disciples, don't tell people I'm the Messiah. If we start with a preconceived motion, preconceived idea, rather than trusting in God, we can get burned. If we can burn others, and we can end up going not in the direction that God wants, but in the direction that we want. We become God. We become, I am going to mold God into the image that I wanted it to be. And think of in the first reading, you know, Sheba, master's palace, I'm going to thrust you from office. I'm going to put this other guy there. Why is God replacing that guy? He did not, apparently he did not do the job. Or well, think of the story of Samuel when Samuel is first approached by God and God tells him, I'm going to, to re- get rid of the house. I'm going, to cha- I'm going to change how things are. And his master, he you know, says to Samuel, how, you know, what's been, so what did he say? You know, don't hold anything back. And he tells him that you know, he said he's going to take your house and bring it down. He says he's going to bring down, you know, he's going to bring down your family. He's going to bring down all of these things. 
And how does he react? He reacts, Eli, saying, He is God, let him do what seems best to him. Not, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to do that. He is the Lord. He will do what he judges best. Didn't rebel. He acknowledged God. And acknowledged the authority of God. And that's the way we should look at these things. There are times when we're not going to understand what's going on. And when those times come, we have to have faith that God knows what he's doing, even if we don't know what he's doing. And now let's get to our prayer requests. We've got several on the, uh, on the wall today. And again, the best way to get your prayer request to us is via the prayer wall at wqphradio.org slash prayer wall. Let's start first with our standing requests for Mary for Nancy, for the intentions of the Dominican Sisters of St. Cecilia, for Eric, for the donors of WQPH, and we are so grateful for you because you keep us afloat, to the two Mary Ann's, the one in New York and the one from our station, and of course for the priests and deacons of our area who serve us, and our priests in Persona Christi, our deacons in obedience. What would we do without them? And now from our prayer, Israelite prayer wall, we have a prayer request for Bethany and Chris. We have a prayer request for the people on Sam's list. And Sam's prayer list must be pretty long. So we're happy to pray for Sam's prayer list. So there's probably a lot of prayer requests in that prayer list there. And we have a prayer request for Claire's son, Brian, who has lost both his legs. And it's a you know sad thing and it's a tough thing for him and his family. So we're happy to pray for him and his family. Pray for a woman who recently lost her husband in a car accident. Prayer requests for all those who are having trouble in these tough economic times. And I ask a prayer request for myself that I'm able to cope with things that have been hard lately. And I want to put in a prayer request for my wife, who's also had some hard times that she's had to deal with. So those are our prayer requests today. And let us pray the second joyful mystery today. Second joyful mystery, the visitation. And let's begin our prayers. We begin all our prayers in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The second joyful mystery is the visitation. We offer thee, O Lord Jesus, the second decade in honor of the visitation of thy Holy Mother to her cousin St. Elizabeth and the sanctification of St. John the Baptist. And we ask of thee through this mystery and through the intercession of our Holy Mother, charity towards our neighbors, which is in effect what we were talking about earlier. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now with the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now with the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners, now with the hour of death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls into heaven, especially those who are most need of thy mercy. May the grace and mystery of the visitation come down to our souls. Amen. And now for those of you doing the indulgence calendar, here are the prayers for the intentions of the Holy Father, per th as is necessary for the indulgences. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of death. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke and we humbly pray and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. And we pray this as we pray everything. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let's get to our closing prayer. And we'll pray that in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God of mercy, as we reach out to those seeking you, send forth your Holy Spirit upon this show, upon this station, upon all the other stations that carry this show, and to all those who listen, to renew us in faith. Enable us to share the good news of the gospel with loving words and caring deeds so that those who have drifted away may be drawn to your church and follow the way of your son Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the light. We make our prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord, and we pray as we pray everything. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Now, this is the... Uh, this is going to be played on the 26th at noon and midnight. So if you're listening to this, there's still time to try and get to the St. Bernard's uh, Festival this weekend. This on Sunday. I won't be there myself as I work Sundays. But there's also the other various church festivals that are coming around this time. So try not to miss them. Take advantage of these little things that can increase your faith. From all of us here, till next week, goodbye, and God bless you all. On the WQPH community calendar. If you get a chance, swing down to St. Bernard's Parish at St. Camilla's Church on Mechanic Street in Fitchburg, and at the entrance, there are envelopes with the names of bishops, and we, we talked about adopt a bishop. There are prayer cards and stuff that you can grab so that you can adopt a bishop to pray for. They're sitting there right at the entrance of the church. If you walk in, you look to the right just before the confessional, they're on a little table. So if you want to do the adopt a bishop, go down to the church there, get an envelope, get the prayer cards, and adopt a bishop to pray for. The country needs your prayers, and the bishops who are going to shepherd us through this time, no matter how this time ends, are going to need it more because they're going to be the ones who will help us to get to where we need to go as the princes of Christ. So go down there and, get, and grab one and adopt a bishop or just pray for a bishop on your own.
You are listening to WQPH 89.3 FM, Shirley Fitchburg. And now a word from author Peter and Jimmy, who is the host of Your Prayer Intentions, taking place every Saturday at 12.30 p.m. Whether you're donating money or giving us prayers, without you, we don't go on. And if you do want to help us go on, please consider going to WQPHradio.org. There's a donate button there. You can give once, you can give monthly, and it makes a difference. It keeps all of our shows, and we have a great lineup of shows keeps us going and whether you're a fan of uh your prayer intentions whether you like steve's show benedict's hammer sundays at midnight whether you like brother matthew and brother anthony from from the housetops which is on sundays 10 30 a.m and 4 p.m whether you're a fan of the children's rosary which we have every day at 5 p.m seven days a week whether you like our local matter show which is saturday at 11 or talk catholic which comes right after us at 12 30 larry's music off sunday at 11 a.m we have the shepherd's pie saturdays at 1 p.m or dan and tom with the 13th apostle which comes just before us at 11 30 any of those shows and all the stuff you donate you help these things come out but what also at the wqph website in addition to podcasts of our shows is the prayer wall right on the prayer wall support wqph and get wqph 24 hours a day seven days a week on wqphradio.org this is peter and jemmy host of your prayer intentions every saturday here on 89.3 wqph P.H. Shirley Fitchburg. Do you have a prayer request that you'd like me to pray for or perhaps the whole community? Well, include that prayer request in an email. Specify if you want it on air or off and email that prayer request to WQPH893 at Comcast.net. Let me repeat that. It's WQPH893 at Comcast.net. And we will pray for you. If you have an urgent request that you're looking for immediate prayer, tweet me directly at the Tech Guy blog on Twitter or the Tech Guy blog on Gab. God bless you.